please join me in welcoming the birthday girl, our chairwoman, Jackie Robinson Ivy. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. I am so happy to be here dining with some of my favorite people. Um, and my apologies for running late. I just told Stella and her table, they make me work over there at that Northern Trust. I don't understand. They, they keep making me work. I don't get it. Um, so I was running late from a meeting. Um, you got the folks, Dan, you got the folks that I didn't see because I didn't get a chance to look in the room, but uh, we take no one for granted here. We appreciate each one of you being here. Um, we like it when you come for your subject matter, the thing that you like the most. Arnold, I am still not ziplining. Not going to happen. <laughs> Have any of you all been ziplining? You brave souls. I'm not doing it. So... Um, but I might get in that ball that goes around and around. You're the one that stays on the ground. I don't know what that one's called. I might go to that one that goes, but I'm not zip lining. Um, I think that Dan, our wonderful CEO, has taken care of everything. Um, we thank the staff. They do such a great job. The Magiano staff and the, and the City Club staff. We do not take them for granted. Their job is tough, especially when we're, they're trying to put food on our table and we're still talking. And they're like, excuse me, excuse me, we're trying to. Um, this is the easiest thing that I get to do today. And that is to bring up one of my favorite people. Um, I've probably forgotten more things than, than, than she's taught me, just um, some of it by ob observation and then other just by one-on-one -on -one con conversation. If you have not had the opportunity to sit and have a full-throated conversation with Cook County President Tony Preckwinkle, then you're, it's your loss. Um, I know that lots of people don't get that opportunity. And again, I'm grateful that I've been able to sit at her feet and glean. Um, just so the sage wisdom that she shares on an everyday basis. I know the commissioners are all fortunate to uh, experience that as well as her staff and all of the folks who work for her, uh, work with her, she would say. Uh, without further ado, I am going to ask Cook County President Tony Preckwinkle to please come up. If you have not turned in your card, your business card, you might want to. I understand Arnold has prepared some special things for us. And if you have questions, please make sure you get them up. It's so much easier to take them if you get them up early. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Jackie, for that kind introduction. Uh, before I begin, I want to acknowledge again our Cook County Commissioners who are here with us. Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Marita, thank you both. Uh, I saw Wendy Paulson. Uh, Wendy is the head of our Conservation and Policy Council and was a, one of our uh, critical actors in the effort to pass the referendum. So I want to thank. <laughs> I want to thank Wendy. Uh, Carolyn Meza is here, who was at the Chicago Park District, head of the Chicago Park District for a couple years in the late 90s. Thank you, Carolyn, for, for joining us. Um, I think I, I met Arnold um, when he was early in his career in the Park District. He was a regional manager for the South Lakefront. Is that right? Did I get that? Close, OK. Good enough. Um, so he and I worked together. Um, and then, of course, he went to the planning department, and we worked together there. Um, and when I, um, when I won the Democratic primary in, in, in 2010, um, I asked him to head up our transition team that was looking at the Forest Preserve District. And then, of course, when I got elected, I asked him to be the superintendent. Um, those were, were difficult few months, uh, getting the new team on board. And as I like to say, I spent a lot of time calling my fellow Democratic committeemen and telling them that I was firing their folks, um, which was <clears throat> an interesting period in my life. Um, and I remember talking to the political sponsor of his predecessor, who couldn't understand why I would possibly want new leadership at the Forest Preserve District. And I did not say to him that the Forest Preserve District had the 
you know, representation, had the reputation of being, you know, kind of a patronage hellhole, and um, where people sort of went when they finished up their service in the city or elsewhere, and then they went as sort of a, a pension opportunity um, to the forest preserves. Um, but I am very grateful to Arnold for taking on this challenge. Um, he's been there now for 12 years, 12 years. And, you know, I have to say that uh, it's partly because I'm an elected official in, in a democracy, but it's partly because I'm a history teacher. You know, I believe that leadership is everything. And if you don't have good leaders, you can't have strong institutions. And I'm really grateful to him for the good work that he's done and the way in which he's kind of laid the table for the passage of our referendum, which will provide additional resources for our forest preserves in perpetuity and um, dramatically strengthen our, our finances. So Arnold, welcome him, please. <laughs> Good afternoon. It is definitely a pleasure to be here uh, with all of you. Thank you again, Madam President. Uh, I appreciate your kind introduction and uh, and the history lesson as always. There's always always uh, interesting history in our local government for sure. Um, I want to take this opportunity to uh, to thank you again, Madam President, for this opportunity to serve as the General Superintendent of the Forest Preserves uh, for your support and leadership at every step. It's been the most interesting and gratifying job that I've ever held. And I gotta tell you, I've had a lot of really cool jobs, but this one, this one, I've been here 12 years and there's a reason for that. I also wanna recognize many of our great partners. Uh, I, I don't know that they're here, but I wanna recognize them anyway, because uh, Benjamin Cox, friends of, CEO of the Friends of the Forest Preserves, and Jerry Edelman of Open Lands, Exec Director. I wanna recognize all of our commissioners who are here in person, thank you so much. Uh, and the ones who are not, because we just have a wonderful working relationship with our board, and that means everything as well and all the other elected officials that, uh, that were recognized earlier. Thank you so much for being here. I also wanna recognize all of our Forest Preserve staff, so please stand up, because you're doing the work. Thank you. We have an excellent team, uh, top to bottom in the Forest Preserves, and that, that's, uh, that is really reflective of the president setting the tone early on and allowing us to create a, a, really, a really effective team. And I particularly want to recognize our Deputy General Superintendent Eileen Fiegel for all of her great work and leadership. Uh, I want to recognize all the other county staff here, particularly those from the office under the president. Uh, we work very closely with the president's office uh, to get things done and they have been wonderful to work with. And then uh, as mentioned earlier, both the Brookfield Zoo and the Chicago Botanic Garden are wonderful partners to us as well. So thank you both for being here. So I'm very happy to be back here at the City Club. It's been several years uh, uh, since I've spoken here, 2015 to be exact. So I think I'm setting some kind of record between, between uh, speeches, it's eight years. Um, but a lot has happened in those eight years uh, since I was last here. So today I wanna tell you a story. It's like a classic tale. It takes place in the woods and wetlands and prairies where wild things live and people are only visitors. And like a Hollywood movie, it has a happy ending, or more accurately, it reaches an exciting height and we can't wait to see what will happen in the next chapter. Now your experience in the Forest Preserves might be from a class reunion or an annual family get together at one of our 300 picnic groves. A lot of people experience the Forest Preserves that way. Uh, or you might be a bird watcher or a runner or a kayaker who uses the preserves as a place to exercise and be outside. You might be one of the many people who discovered or rediscovered the importance of nature close to home during, in the preserves during the height of the pandemic. I know a lot of people had that experience. The forest preserves remain open during the stay at home era and throughout COVID-19. We worked hard to protect our visitors under changing, constantly changing public health guidelines and to maintain and protect the preserves during a time of unprecedented demands. So we had a lot of people out and it was a very difficult time to manage the assets that we had while those people were out, but we wanted them to be there, and so it worked out well. It was absolutely the right decision. In a typical year, we estimate that the preserves host about 62 million visits. So not 62 million visitors, but people coming multiple times or one time, but 62 million visits in an average year. In that first COVID year, though, we experienced about 100 million visits. I'm proud that we were able to be a resource for so many people away from the stress and into the natural world when there was really no place else to go. 
Whatever your relationship with the forest preserves of Cook County, though, there is probably more than there's probably more that you might not know. So let me start with the big picture. Who are we? The origin story of the first, or one of the first and largest urban forest preserve systems in the country begins more than 100 years ago, 108 years ago, way longer than that actually. At the start of the 20th century, it was clear that Chicago was fast becoming one of the world's great cities. To some visionary civic leaders, it was also clear that the region's beautiful landscapes would inevitably be lost to farming, houses, factories, strip malls, well they didn't know about strip malls, but all of those things were gonna be in play as, as more people move to the region and into this big city. But they had an audacious idea. Create an emerald necklace of public land around Chicago and protect it forever as a place for residents to learn about and enjoy nature. Today, the forest preserves consist of nearly 70,000 acres. That's 11% of the land in the county. Or put another way, the forest preserves could cover both the cities of Peoria and Springfield combined. Although we are in and around the city in the suburbs of the second most populous county in America, the Forest Preserves is different than a park district. And the parks are awesome. I, I had a chance to work for many years in the parks. But we're more like a state or a national park. You can go just five or 15 minutes from your home and be in a preserve where trees or grasslands are all you can see stretching into the horizon. You can see, you can see no buildings. You just are out in nature. Places where you can see wild animals on a walk through the woods or listen to the sound of a running stream and a background chorus of chirping insects. Thousands of species of plants and animals live in the diverse ecosystems of the Cook County Forest Preserves. Thanks in large part to our commitment to ecological restoration, we're seeing animals that were nearly gone or had disappeared entirely from our region. Bald eagles nesting, river otters, black crowned night herons, and, and so many more. In total, there are more than 100 endangered or threatened species that depend on the forest preserves as their home. And those are both plants and animals. From the beginning, our mission has not been not only to protect and preserve these natural wonders, but do it in a way that provides for the education, pleasure, and recreation of the public. We like to say that in the forest preserves, you can choose your own adventure. The forest preserves offers more than 350 miles of paved and unpaved trails for guests or for cyclists, cross country skiers, runners, horseback riders, and families out, on, out with a stroller. Trail use is by far the most popular way that people experience the forest preserves. We have campgrounds where you can spend a night under the stars in a cabin, tent, or bunkhouse, or even an RV if you got one. And for many city and suburban people who have never camped, we make it easy by renting sleeping bags, flashlight, and other equipment that you might need. Because if you've never camped before, you probably don't have the gear, right? You can fish it, uh, in more than 40 lakes, lagoons, and ponds in the forest preserves. And lakes and rivers in the preserves are a great place to bring out a canoe or a kayak. Or you can rent a boat or one of those canoes or kayaks at one of our boating centers as well. If you want to learn more about the native plants and animals of our region, visit one of our six nature centers and check out the displays and talk to a naturalist. Or come to one of our hundreds and hundreds of events that we offer every year, from solstice bonfires, like that picture right there, to archery lessons, to spring wildflower flower hikes. And it may, be, it may come as a surprise to you, but maybe not, because you've heard these two institutions mentioned several times, but both the Brookfield Zoo and the Chicago Botanic Garden are part of the Forest Preserve system. They sit on Forest Preserve land, and they're wonderful partners. These world-class institutions are close partners that share our mission to protect and educate people about the natural world. I've been fortunate to have served as a general superintendent of the Forest Preserves, as the president said, for more than 12 years. That's really unbelievable when I think about it. But from the start, the president provided a clear mandate for reform and accountability. And she told you a little bit about what we were up against at first. Um, but, but she provided that both for the larger county government and for the forest preserves. Let me take a moment to highlight some of the things that we have, have accomplished during this time. So in the last decade and more, we've accomplished how, we've improved how the district operates, making it more transparent, accountable, and, it, and an efficient agency. We've increased the amount of land under ecological restoration. So we do all this conservation work and it was about 1,500 acres when we started and we're up to 15,000 acres currently. And we're gonna do a lot more than that. We found ways to bring in more resources, including more than doubling the annual average in grants and non-tax income. So we leverage every penny that we have if we can. Uh, we cut the ribbon to those campgrounds I mentioned earlier, bringing back camping to the larger Cook County public after being unavailable for more than 50 years. The only people we allowed to camp were scout groups and, or, and groups like that. It's open to everybody now and we're excited about that. And they're doing really well. We created new program, a new programming department and added more than a thousand new activities annually. We reset and rebuilt our relationship with conservation organizations, long-term, long-time volunteers, and other critical partners. 
Over the last dozen years, the Forest Preserves and our collaborators have been recognized with more than 100 awards for those changes and many more. So we've not only doing well locally, we're being recognized nationally for the work that we're doing as an urban conservation organization. As part of our centennial celebration in 2014, we released an ambitious blueprint, our next century conservation plan. And some of you here, like Wendy and others, were part of that process. The NCCP lays out a set of bold actions to make the Forest Preserves of Cook County a national leader in urban conservation. It remains our guiding light for initiatives and improvements. We had a problem though. With the financial resources to, available to us at that time, the Forest Preserves was unable to even keep up with the capital needs and pension obligations that we had, let alone any large scale progress towards the goals of the NCCP. For years, we worked with President Preckwinkle, our Board of Commissioners, and those critical partners to find a way to bring in more revenue. The twist is that the Forest Preserve is its own unique governmental unit, connected but distinct from Cook County, so we can't, can't just raise our own taxes or property taxes. Uh, our independent taxing authority is limited by state law. So after a lot of years of talking about it and working through process and convincing and showing that we were sincere and that we were running a better government, the solution was a unanimous vote by our Board of Commissioners to put a referendum to the voters on the ballot last November to raise the Cook County property tax by one quarter of one tenth of one percent as an investment to the, in the forest preserves. For an average homeowner, the additional cost would be about $20 a year more for your total property tax bill annually. For the forest preserves, however, this would put us, this change would put us, provide enough to put us on a sustainable fiscal path for the foreseeable future. At the forest preserves, ethic rules, ethics rules prohibited us from advocating for the passage of the referendum. So as an employer, we couldn't get out there and advocate uh, ourselves. That, that work was done by a coalition of more than 100, 130 nonprofits businesses, civic groups, and was led by organizations like Friends of the Forest Preserves, Open Lands, Trust for Public Land, and the Nature Conservancy. Now, I just got to tell you, that uh, is a statement that, that really holds a lot of weight. I would tell you, when I took the job, there is no way those organizations would have supported us in a tax increase. That means that our relationships and the work that we've done together cemented a, re cemented a relationship where they understood that we had a need and they were willing to get out there and raise money and, and advocate on our behalf and that made a big difference. So I just wanna thank them all for that. We're also gratified that the Civic Federation, the Chicago Tribune and Sun-Times all endorsed a yes vote for our referendum item. And we were overjoyed this past November 8th when the, the referendum not only passed, but it did so overwhelmingly with 69% of the vote. That's amazing. <laughs> It isn't easy to get more than two thirds of the voters in, Cook, in a Cook County election to vote to raise their taxes, but we did, so that is pretty awesome. Uh, I know that the incredible efforts by our advocates had a lot to do with this win, and I wanna thank them again. Uh, I think that those accomplishments I listed uh, that this, through, about this administration and uh, were also a big, a major factor in that support, and, and people, the Forest Preserves are on an upward trajectory, and I think people can see that. But more than anything, I think, I think the results show that people love nature. They want to be able to get out and enjoy it. They know it makes our region a better, healthier place to live. And they want to protect it for the generations to come. So that's the big scene in the story. A victory by an intrepid band with a vision for positive change that was years in the making. So that's my speechwriter, Carl. He put that in there. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. I like that. Fine. Um, it, I think it's a pretty heartwarming tale, but wait, don't roll the credits yet. You might be asking, what will the Forest Preserve, what will the Forest Preserves do with another $42 million in its annual budget? And you'll be glad to hear that we have a lot of good ideas, and other people have good ideas for us too. Um, far before the November election, we shared our vision on how we would invest this additional income over the years if the referendum would pass. Half will go to reach the goals of the next century conservation plan, more ecological restoration work, acquiring more land to be protected, new and improved amenities around the county, and more public engagement and programs. About a quarter will go to the capital needs for the forest reserves, the Brookfield Zoo and the Chicago Botanic Garden. Another 20% will go to resolve our pension shortfall. And about 5% will go to landscape maintenance, police, legal and other back office departments to handle the growth associated with these new efforts. So we're gonna to have to grow a lot of what we do. To reach the big ideas of the next century conservation plan, over the years we've created a series of plans dedicated to ecological restoration, trails, programming, and more. 
So when the referendum passed, we were ready to amend our 2023 budget based on a set of existing priorities. This year, those, with those extra funds from the referendum, we will add two lar new large-scale restoration project site, sites on the, in the south and southwest part of Cook County, removing invasive species and bringing back native plants that create healthy ecosystems. We'll expand our public engagement and add more programs with a focus on schools, city neighborhoods, and people who have yet to visit the forest preserves. We will dig deeper into our list of long needed repairs and formerly out of reach improvements to trails, restrooms, picnic shelters, and other amenities in the preserves. And we'll begin to switch to a greener and more efficient garbage removal service and accelerate many energy efficient improvements to our offices and our maintenance buildings. So things that the public may, not, may or may not see but are really important to running a, a much better organization and a healthier organization. The referendum increase will also provide more than $7 million annually for land acquisition. That's a significant, that is significant because it can leverage opportunities, grant opportunities, and is a steady, reliable source for long-term plans. As we expand with these new resources, the Forest Reserve future will be shaped by our commitment to two fundamental issues. Let me talk a few minutes for a few minutes about these because they are a big part of our story moving forward. The first is racial equity, diversity, and inclusion. Everyone is welcome in the forest preserves. And yet many people of color have not always felt that way. They have never felt invited or even safe in outdoor natural spaces. This is not just a forest preserve or Chicago or issue in the forest preserves of the Chicago region. It is a problem for conservation work and outdoor adventuring across the country. This is a big issue everywhere. That can be true for people who identify as LGBTQ plus or people with disabilities. Everybody benefits from spending time, some time in the natural world to exercise or to disconnect from every, the everyday stress of work, school, or work at home. Research has shown that the benefits of just being in nature include lowering your blood pressure, increased brain activity, and better sleep. That's gotta be a reason I'm here too for so many, for so many years. It's definitely helping me out with those things. Um, that shouldn't be surprising. You feel better after an afternoon or do even just an hour in nature. Uh, not everybody has the money or capacity to get to Wisconsin or Michigan, nor they shouldn't have to go that far for a date with Mother Nature. The forest preserves are the natural resource right here close to home. For all these reasons, getting our visitorship to reflect the diversity of Cook County is a big part of our next century conservation plan. I got to say, this has always been part of the way we thought about it, but it was really important to ingrain it in everything we do. We, we talked about it. We, we made those efforts from the beginning. Um, but certainly this is a way of ingraining it and making it part of our fabric. We got a wake up call more than four years ago though, when an intoxicated man harassed a woman <clears throat> at one of our picnic groves because she was wearing a shirt with a Puerto Rican flag on it. Worse yet, one of our former officers now on the scene ignored it and you might've heard about it, it was a big story. The man was arrested by our police and found guilty of a hate crime. And that officer resigned from our department during the investigation of his actions. But clearly the incident was unacceptable on many levels. We wanted to dig deeper. How can we be, be better? How can we better be true to our values of equity and diversity? In the following months, we held a summit with members of the Puerto Rican community, supported a Peace and Preserves event at Caldwell Woods, and had a staff-wide cultural awareness forum. We created a cross-departmental racial equity, diversity, and inclusion committee for the Forest Preserve staff <clears throat> to envision and push for specific ready initiatives. So not just talking about big picture, but how do we tie it to specific changes in our organization. Since then, our Conservation and Policy Council has developed, and our Board of Commissioners have adopted five position papers around critical issues facing the Forest Preserves in the years to come. That includes a paper, papers focused on racial equity and also another on diversity and inclusion. These systems and framework are an essential foundation as we have undertaken real changes in how we work. The committee has, diverse, has diversified our interview panels for hiring and expanded our reach into communities impacted by a history of racism. Now it's working on a three-year plan that covers everything from racial equity training for volunteers to removing barriers to professional develop, development for members of our staff. We have hyper-local initiatives focused on underserved and diverse communities around the preserves like Bobby and Woods on the far south side of the city of Chicago. And we're working with local organizations and residents to guide programming and how we can make deeper investments at the sites. We've created programs for folks who don't have much experience out in nature, and that's a lot of us. 
Our award-winning Greater Maywood Paddling Program gives community groups free access to kayak equipment and offers training to leaders of scout groups, church, church groups, and other organizations to lead paddling adventures out in the preserves. So we train their group leaders. We do this for camping, for paddling, and other things, and then that we provide them equipment to bring their groups out once they've been trained with us. So we're removing, again, removing those barriers. We are partnering with local and Native American organizations on cultural events in the preserves, ecological stewardship, and respectfully telling the story of the special relationship between Native peoples and the land. Native peoples have existed here for over 12,000 years. And we're working to make the forest preserves more accessible to people with disabilities, expanding programs such as, such as one at a, a, a weekend at one of our campgrounds that highlights opportunities for accessible camping, paddling, fishing, bicycling in the preserves. And our website now has detailed information on where to find accessible picnic groves, fishing piers, sites, and more. So you have to know where to go um, that works for you. We don't have all the answers, for sure, when it comes to equity and inclusion, and our work is far from done. But we do have explicit guidelines for where we want to go, and we have momentum in the right direction. And I can promise you that we will continue to make these efforts a priority. The same can be said for the other fundamental issue I want to discuss, sustainability and climate change. Not only are the forest preserves a place for us to go out and be healthy, the lands keep our communities help, healthy, it keeps our region healthy. The forest preserves of Cook County are the largest clean air resource in the region, the lungs of the region, cleaning and cooling the air we breathe. The preserves also absorb as much greenhouse gas annually as is produced by 330,000 passenger vehicles. The preserves help keep our water cleaner as well. Hundreds of millions of gallons of rainwater fall on our land every year because stormwater is absorbed and released more slowly than, it, than if it fell on buildings or roads. It protects homes and businesses from flooding. The rainwater is cleaner when it reaches the watershed too because it hasn't picked up the oil and other pollutants from asphalt and rooftops and has been filtered through the soil and plants. When we add more land to the preserves, we're adding more capacity to clean our air and clean our water. That was part of the referendum campaign, if you remember. It's about clean air and clean water. That's part of what we do. This is also true when we restore our preserves to ecological health. So just as open land is better for climate change than a parking lot, healthy native ecosystems are better, better for, for us than turf or grass. A study of our Deer Grove East Preserve, where we've done a lot of restoration work, estimated that the site's climate regulation capacity increased 15% after restoration there. As an agency with a mission to protect and preserve nature, we've committed to using sustainable and low impact practices. Our sustainability and climate resiliency plan outlines how we can improve energy consumption. Uh, three years ago, our board of directors, our board of commissioners, I'm sorry, unanimously adopted for the preserves to get to zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. So we're on the right path. We have LEED certified buildings, we have solar panels on facility rooftops, and we're adding more hybrid vehicles to our fleet of trucks and cars. Uh, we now have set all of our electric, electricity consumption with renewable energy credits, and the Palos Preserves became the world's largest urban night sky place in part due to a lighting transition plan that uses less electricity. We're improving recycling in the preserves, promoting greener practices when people apply for a picnic permit, and encouraging our staff to be energy and waste conscious. Just like with our ready work, the work is incomplete, but we're steadfast in our commitment to a sustainable tomorrow for the preserves and for the region. I hope you learned something new about the forest preserves uh, of Cook County here today and, and, and Jackie's birthday also, really important too. Uh, more than that, I just hope that I inspired you to take your first or your latest visit to the forest preserves. It really is incredible. I, I make every effort to spend time on a trail when I can. And I'm a lifelong city person. I'm born and raised and still living here on the south side of Chicago. Uh, I spent a big part of my earlier career at the Chicago Park District, as was mentioned earlier. So I'm familiar with, uh, with and invested in public open space. I know how important it really is. But I can tell you when the le you leave the streets of our neighborhoods and villages and towns and enter into the forest preserves, you'll find something that is special and unique. Uh, what I've said here today about the benefits of being surrounded by nature, that's something I personally experience when I get a chance to get out in one of our preserves, and I hope that you can too. And with that, I'd love to take any questions. that earlier yeah sorry um so i want to give i don't know a couple of minutes to get his water and do we have any questions coming up if not we have a few um so 
I, I just have a question. I'm a former Girl Scout and um, in Camp Widgewagon in Springfield in Sangamon County. I just want to know those, um, the uh, camping, the campgrounds. little, the campgrounds? Yes. Do they have like showers and everything in them? So, yeah, they do. Actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> then there's, that's, that's a possibility. Yeah. Donna, we maybe can do that, right? <laughs> She's done it. Okay, okay you've d uh, it's showers and all amenities, right? There's showers, amenities, and uh, okay. a couple of them even have, uh, have air conditioning. Okay, we're getting closer, you know, <laughs> but I didn't, you know, when I was at Camp Widgewagon when I was a little girl, we had to, oh yeah, you don't even want, yeah. I'm not that out, I love outdoors, but yeah. Um, I, I will say, all joking aside, I, um, I have rheumatoid arthritis and it is no fun, literally. That's the reason I'm no longer running around in four inch heels. But I will say that the Thatcher Woods um, Park has been um, hugely comforting for me. Um, lots of miles on that trail, um, lots of hearing coyotes, and other things that make me turn around and not, you know, get my full walk in. So, um, but thank you for providing the space that you do. I think that's huge. And um, also for the Brookfield Zoo, um, if you have little ones, when it is, 90 degrees, 95 degrees in the middle of the summer, and you just, especially if you have boys, um, I had two, my son and my nephew, and I cannot tell you how many days Brookfield Zoo saved my, saved their lives. <laughs> yes, many days. They were fascinated by the elephants and everything, and we got to the dolphins, to the pool, to the cool area, and they saved their life many days. You were saving lives out yes. there, Arnold. <laughs> um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about how you talked to various partners to get the tax increase, because it didn't seem like it was that much money. Don't come at me for saying that didn't seem like it was a lot of money, but it doesn't. Gee, one tenth of a... What, one quarter of one tenth of one tenth. Yeah. Um, I probably spend that at Starbucks on a given day, but um, I want to know what your conversations were like leading up to um, getting to that tax increase. Yeah. So um, we really started talking about it uh, with some seriousness maybe five or six years ago. We recognized, and our CFO, Steve Hughes, uh, is with us, uh, who's outstanding, really made it clear to us that what we were doing while we're making all these changes and improvements uh, was not sustainable financially. Uh, that, you know, the things that we we're looking to do or continue to do just were not going to be able to continue to do those over a longer period of time. And so the biggest part was actually just showing that we were not only just good stewards of the land, but we were being good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. People had to trust that we were spending money wisely and making good decisions. Uh, and so we spent a lot, you know, we, we did that as part of what we, what we were trying to do is run a better organization. Um, but really started with having conversations, uh, obviously with the president, but uh, with the board of commissioners and the, the members at the time. And, and frankly, there wasn't a lot of appetite by, uh, by, by some folks to, to talk about a tax increase. They felt like it was just a, a third rail issue. Um, but as we, we kind of went along and we talked about it and we started to do some polling and we reached out to the Trust for Public Land who does that work. They do these sort of things all around the country and very successfully, we recognized that there was a lot of interest and that people would be open to it with the right messaging. And um, it just was, uh, I guess the, the message is just, you have to be uh, persistent. Uh, and, and so I think uh, while it's not a lot on the tax bill, but it's still a tax decrease and in Illinois, that's, you know, people don't want to talk about it. Um, but so we had a lot of partners who got behind it. And so having our partners uh, be on board uh, made a huge difference uh, because those are the folks who are also watchdogs. So they have their partners with their watchdogs. And so if we're not doing a good job, they'll let you know and they'll let us know. And so I think we worked together and everybody understood the reality of the situation over time. And so we got there, but it, it didn't it didn't happen in a day. It took yeah. multiple years. <clears throat> Thank you for clearing that. The point that I was making is that, you know, um, it always takes collaboration to get things done. And um, there's an old saying, it says that some people don't believe fat meat is greasy. Um, you guys have heard that before, right? Okay, is that another cultural thing? See, it's a cultural thing, right? Okay, it's cultural. Thank you, President. Okay, if you don't know, ask somebody that looks like me. Um, in Illinois, we don't get things done without collaboration. And um, I'm amazed because if you've ever been, how many people have actually been out to one of the trails or taken advantage of? So, well, these are all your friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so I'm preaching to the choir, but um, it, obviously it takes collaboration and um, you just don't get things done without knowing what you're walk, do, walking into. And I can tell you, I see people riding their bikes, 
Um, the point about connecting with nature, it does make you feel better. And in the city, you don't get a lot of that. It's just so great to have the forest preserves. You see people walking with babies. I think I saw a great picture of a woman walking with her baby. Um, it's just such a great, we, I, don't I don't know that we take advantage of all that we have, but clearly all the people in this room do. Erin um, Aylman says from CMAP, what does success look like in 10 to 20 years? And are there any hidden gems that you might recommend? Yeah. Um, so success looks like uh, a lot more rest, a lot of a lot more of our lands being fully restored and healthy ecosystem. So uh, I don't have a picture of it right now, but if you drive by preserves that have been unrestored, you see sort of this thicket of undergrowth underneath the trees, and it's it's those are invasive, you know, plant species that have overtaken our our native species, and it sort of chokes out the sunlight and doesn't allow the sunlight to get to the bottom of the floor of the forest, and things don't grow healthily. So having all that removed and having these healthy ecosystems and all the things that exist, all these plants and animals that would exist uh, with healthy ecosystems are important and all the other benefits I talked about. So a lot more of that 30,000 acres total being managed here, maybe even more over time. Um, a government that really uh, is working hard to make sure that people of all backgrounds here in Cook County feel comfortable and that they're actually out and that there's no barriers. And there's reasons, there's different reasons why people don't come and why they didn't feel comfortable historically. We've got to break through that, and, and we've been working hard to break through that. And we've done a lot, but there's more to do. So just more people feeling comfortable because it is a quality of life issue for folks. Um, and like we all feel better. I live in the city, but I do feel better on days when I get out in the nature for sure. And I know I'm not unique that way. Uh, what was the other? Do you have any hidden gems? Hidden gems. So that's like picking your favorite child, right? You know, it's tough. Um, I always recommend Palos as a beautiful place to go. It's not far. That's just right off. I-55 and um, it's it's the largest sort of single area in the preserves that's contiguous and trail systems, nature centers, campgrounds, got a little bit of everything. You can go up to Bussy Woods up north. It just depends what you like to do. So there's all these really wonderful places that are uh, that are pretty phenomenal uh, throughout the system and um, easy to get, relatively easy to get to. And there's some places in the city that are great. So if you, you know, if you live south, you can go out to Eggers Grove on the far southeast side of the city in the 10th Ward. It's really, really awesome trail hiking, beautiful nature out there. Dan Ryan Woods is well known by a lot of folks on the southwest side. And the North Branch Trail on the northwest side of the city is really phenomenal as well. So that's probably our single biggest use trail is the North Branch Trail. Bobian Woods out uh, in Alg the Algal Gardens area is also pretty awesome. So there's a lot. It's like I said, it's hard to, be hard to pick. You really can't go wrong with any of them. As for me and my house, we live you know, west, so it's Thatcher Woods and obviously our church picnic, which is always a blast. And um, yep, can't remember the name of which one it is. It's one on First Avenue, which, uh, First Avenue, which one is that? Right by Brookfield Zoo. Oh, that's Zoo Woods. Zoo Woods. Yeah. I guess I should remember that name, Zoo Woods. It's right by the... Emily Rusig, am I saying your name correct, Emily? Ricewig, my apologies. Um, how do volunteers participate in the success of the Forest Preserve? Yeah. Um, so our volunteers uh, really are an integral part of what we do. I, I, I think about the relationship when I started and where it is now. When I started, it was more of an adversarial relationship with volunteers, which to me made no sense. Um, and uh, we had to really work hard to prove that we wanted volunteers to be. I see some of our volunteers at the table there, uh, Laurel and, and, uh, and others. Um, but we had to work hard that we were sincere about working with our volunteers and supporting them what they do. So we have volunteers, the majority of them do this restoration work. And they're out on beautiful days, they're out on really horrible days, and, and every day in between volunteering and doing this restoration work because they're committed to you know protecting nature. I also think it's a great way for people to meet each other who are uh, uh, to associate with people who are, have a sort of a common goal. And so I think there's some lifelong friendships that develop with our volunteers amongst each other because of the, the nature of the work that they're doing. But we have volunteers who volunteer at nature centers and our trail watch volunteers are awesome. They really are, they're out on trails and they can see things that we can't always see because it's 70,000 acres and you can't possibly be everywhere in 70,000 acres all the time, but volunteers help us with that. So the volunteers are really essential to what we do. And um, again, it's that whole spirit of collaboration and partnerships, having good partners and volunteers that we talk to and we have a respectful relationship and we share information. Uh, I think we've come a long way there and I, I'm really proud that, uh, that we have that, that relationship. And they're really our best advocates, really. They, they know the preserves as well as anybody. And so they, they can speak well or ill, <laughs> depending on what the issue. And so generally, I think they speak well, the forest preserves, but I think the volunteers are essential to what we do. So. And we have a lot of folks who volunteered who work for us now too. They, they, they're really that passionate about it. 
Did you have your staff stand up? I did. Okay, I must have missed that. Where is the staff? Um, we're over that there they are. Great job, you guys. Um, so Gia Bronner from Bronner Group says, hi Gia. What efforts are undertaken by the Forest Preserve to ensure the safety of all who visit? It's a good question. And so there's a safety and there's a perception of safety issue, I think. So uh, the statistics tell you that, the, that issues of, of crime in the forest preserves are lower than the, pot, than the general areas that are around them. Uh, and so they're, they're generally very safe. Um, we have our own law enforcement department. We have uh, off, you know, 100 plus sworn officers who patrol the forest preserves who are out. Um, we have a lot of eyes on the preserves. We have our trail watch uh, volunteers. I think we're several hundred trail watch volunteers now as well. So they report things that they see as well. Um, I think the bigger issue, frankly, is just the perception. I think, and so there, it falls into several categories, but the two that jump out at me are, uh, am I safe because I'm really out here in the middle of you know, a place where there's nobody else around? Am I in a safe circumstance? So and I think for us who live in the city all the time, we're used to being around a lot of people. Um, uh, maybe you're uncomfortable with that idea, but the reality is that the, the numbers tell you that you're very safe. Uh, you know, and there's always, you, know, you wanna be smart, obviously, wherever you are, if you see somebody that's questionable, but uh, you are safe. So it's just really, I think it's more a perception of safety uh, for folks. And there's, the, and there's the other one, like, am I safe because are there gonna be animals out there that I should be fearful of, like coyotes or... <laughs> Uh, I was going to say coyotes. Yeah. Coyotes aren't going to bother you. Coyotes actually see you and they go the other way. They really, they really are, um, <laughs> they really are uh, scavengers and they are, they are very smart about uh, surviving, so they stay away from people as much. Now, the only time they come to people is people attempt to feed them, which I will tell you, do not feed coyotes. That's a bad, bad idea. Um, so there's that perception of, hey, I'm not used to being in nature. Am I going to be safe out in nature? The real predators that would have been a problem or, uh, that, that people we got rid of years ago are like bears and wolves. Those don't exist in our forest preserves. They, people are the, the alpha predator there and got rid of them a long time ago. Uh, so they don't exist here except in the zoos and in places like that. I just have to ask, who would feed a coyote? People do. Why? Because people like to feed animals and so they do. I should just not say anything, right, President? Just, <laughs> just don't, just, okay, move on. Mm. Okay, that was, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, Mike De Santiago, and this will be our last question, says, can you explain how the forest preserves make the Chicago Lake area unique among major urban areas to, in the, in other, against others in the country? That's a great question. Thanks, Mike. Um, so, what makes the Forest Preserves of Cook County unique is that, not that it's 70,000 acres, because you can go out to a national park that's you know hundreds of thousands or millions of acres out west, is that you have 70,000 acres right here in Chicago in the suburbs that's so close to where we all live. And it's, you know, Chicago, Cook County is the second largest, most populous county in the country, and Chicago is the third largest city in the country. So you have 70,000 acres of natural lands that close to that many people. So 5.2 million residents of Cook County, uh, you know, the region is, is more than that. And obviously Chicago is over two, two and a half million people as well. So you have all of this land available to you so close to an urban center. So that makes us unique. That's, you won't find that in any other urban, urbanized area. We've got all this land so close. You've got parks and Chicago. We are lucky because we had very thoughtful people over a hundred years ago who wanted to protect our lakefront and who wanted to protect and protect this open space uh, that, that we benefit from now. And so it's our job as the stewards, you know, in this point in time to protect it and to expand it further and, uh, and manage it. And why do we manage it? Because we've impacted it by being here. So we have to manage it so that it's healthy. Otherwise it won't be healthy. So that's, uh, but it's, that's why we're unique. So where are the campgrounds? So there are five campgrounds in our system. Uh, there's, so you're going from starting south out in Calumet City, South Holland. You've got the uh, you, you got Camp Shibona. You've got Camp Bullfrog out in the Palos area, which is wonderful. You've got Camp Rheinberg up in uh, Palatine and uh, Camp Dan Beard in Northbrook and, what, and Camp Sullivan in Oak Forest. Thank you. Uh, so they're, they're spread around geographically so you can get them. They all have some sim similarities. They all have cabins and and tent sites and all that, but some, you know, they all have trails, access to trail systems, but some like Camp, uh, Camp Bullfrog has access to lakes, they're right there. Um, they all have, Camp Sullivan has a barn with an indoor climbing wall, so they all have a little bit of difference. So I would encourage you to visit them all at some point. You know, President Preckwinkle has camped many times with us with her grandchildren, I've camped. 
A lot of folks would camp. They're great for if you have kids, you want to do birthday parties, take them camping, put them out in a tent, you sleep inside the cabin. You know, it's, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. Dan, I think we should plan a board retreat at one of the we'll forest preserves. You. Absolutely. And you'll host us? We'll host you, absolutely. No coyotes, right? And J and A can go and zip line while we're having a meeting, okay? So uh, we have a little work to do, and I need somebody to, what's your name? Hi, Ed. We've just become fast friends. I'm going to ask you to pull four names um, from the, so thank you in advance to the staff. I know you guys pulled this together. We have some raffles to give away, and this is fun. They are, and there's no particular order. One will be one overnight forest preserve, one overnight forest preserves of Cook County camping certificate, one four Brookfield Zoo tickets plus parking pass. That's big. <laughs> That's really big. Uh, four Chicago Botanic VIP orchid ticket shows. Can you put my name in there, please? <laughs> okay, because I think I want to go to that. Um, Two, yeah, this is a thing that, yeah. Go Ape, Zip Line, and Adventure Park Treetop Adventure Course tickets. <laughs> and then the last is Forest Preserves of Cook County Swag. So, did you pull all the names? Okay, we got, wait, there's, I think we have one more. You need to pull one more. Yeah, close your eyes and pull one more. They get everything. So oh, wait a minute. So did I do this wrong? That's what you get if you win. Everything. Oh, every. Oh, this is a payload. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I thought people only got one thing, but they're getting. See, she's trying to like tell me you're not doing it wrong, Jay. Okay. So everybody's getting all of this. All these people. That's how this is gonna. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Two. Only four. The staff is like, get this right. Don't mess this up. <laughs> We're not giving this stuff away. Okay, so drum roll, here we go. The first person is Alicia Levere of Morton Arboretum. Are you here? Where's Alicia? Cool. I am available if you'd like to take me to the, to the, uh, to the orchid show. Um, full disclosure, you guys, when I say that, I'm really only kidding. I don't want people to think that I'm trying to, you know, look off the prizes. <laughs> Um, Renaissance Management and Technology Systems, Carlos Ponce, Presidency. There you are, Carlos. What'd you say? There's no golf passes on here. Listen, we're happy to get what we got here. You just be, be happy with what we got. Um, S.P. Murphy Incorporated, Sean P. Murphy. Where's Sean? Hey, Sean. And a City Club longtime member, and might be like a historic member, Stella Carl Black. So I'm going to ask that you all see Amanda. She's, she'll take care of you. I don't know how that's going to work out. Ooh, what if I had messed that up and given away like five each or something? You guys would have like never come again. Um, you have a membership. I don't know where it is, but we present each speaker, and I don't know how many you have at this point with your, with your annual membership, and um, we are so grateful that you've come. How many people are going to at least tell some folks, because it seems like everybody in here is already taking advantage of everything, um, we'll actually tell some people to get back out to the park, to the forest preserves. Yeah. This has been great. We look forward to hearing from you again, and um, we will take you up on that, okay. on hosting us. We'll love to have you. No coyotes. My, minus the coyotes. <laughs> Feeding coyotes. I don't understand it. Thank you so much for being here. We are adjourned, and thank you all for joining us today. Thank you.